The purpose of this video is to review the bony anatomy native to the malar area that directly impacts both dermal filler and anesthetic injection site selection for cheek augmentation treatment. Although dermal fillers are considered to be safe, the potential risk for serious adverse events remains regardless of which filler is used. The standard of care for injectable treatment is predicated on a solid footing in facial anatomy. An intimate knowledge of the three-dimensional arrangement of the face is required to minimize the possibility of complications. Vascular compromise and occlusion can occur with any dermal filler following inadvertent intra-arterial injection, and it's generally the volume of product injected rather than the filler type that has the greatest impact. The larger the bolus and the larger the branch of the artery that's embolized, the larger the area of necrosis. Facial vasculature is replete with anastomoses linking the external blood supply of the face with the internal blood supply of the skull. In addition to decreasing inadvertent intravascular injection, understanding the location of major vessels can also decrease the occurrence of bruising and thereby the postoperative downtime patients may experience after dermal filler treatment. Additionally, understanding where neuronal structures are resident can aid the practitioner in selecting a more precise location for injection of local anesthetic. Our discussion today will focus exclusively on the foramina and their attendant neurovascular contents found within the expected injection zone for malar augmentation. There are two foramina located within the cheek augmentation zone. These are the infraorbital foramen and the zygomatic facial foramen. Both of these foramina allow passage of ophthalmic artery end vessels. These vessels anastomose with many branches of the facial artery located within the malar augmentation area. It's well established that although rare, blindness can occur as a result of dermal filler embolization from anywhere on the face via arterial anastomoses with the ophthalmic and central retinal arteries. Consensus recommendations to decrease intravascular injection risk include avoiding high pressure injections, use of larger gauge cannula when possible, and injecting small amounts with continuous movement of either the needle or cannula when not in contact with bone. Knowing the approximate location of neurovascular bundles can help guide injection location for practitioners. Most studies that have looked at foramen locations were done largely on dry skulls devoid of soft tissue. For the cosmetic injector, visible landmarks and those that are easily palpable on the facial skin are superior to numerical averages that pertain solely to bony landmarks only visible on the dry skull. Here, I'll present data from two papers that will help injectable practitioners determine approximate locations of both the infraorbital foramen and the zygomatic facial foramen using soft tissue and easily palpated bony landmarks. The infraorbital foramen is found on the maxillary bone. It's superior to the canine fossa and inferior to the lower margin of the orbit. It transmits the infraorbital nerve, a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, and the infraorbital artery and vein. To help locate this structure, I'll reference a 2017 article in Surgical and Radiological Anatomy. Draw a line from the lateral palpebral commissure to the ala of the nose. The majority of the infraorbital foramina, 75%, were found to be located on the lower half of that line. The medial palpebral commissure was used as a third reference point to create a triangle. The infraorbital foramen was located lateral to this defined triangular region in 20% of the case studies and within this triangle in only 5% of the cases. Following this method, the majority of infraorbital foramen will be found on the lower half of a line drawn from the lateral palpebral commissure to the nasal ala. Now let's look at the zygomatic facial foramen. This is a small foramen at the mid-lateral surface of the zygomatic bone. It transmits the zygomatic facial nerve, a branch of the zygomatic nerve from the maxillary division of the trigeminal, and the zygomatic facial vessels. As mentioned previously, these are also end vessels from the ophthalmic artery. A 2017 paper in the British Journal of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery presents the following method for locating the zygomatic facial foramen. 
The Frankfurt plane is identified by drawing a line running from the superior margin of the tragus to the inferior most margin of the ipsilateral orbit. Next, palpate the zygomatical frontal suture. This suture line is easily palpated at the lateral orbit. Now, using the most posterior margin of that suture, we drop a vertical line 90 degrees to the Frankfurt line. More than 90% of zygomatic facial foramina will be located within a 15 millimeter radius anterior to the intersection of these two lines. Only 10% will be within a 10 millimeter radius distal to that same intersection point. Knowing the likely location of these foramina and their attendant vessels can help guide the practitioner in needle and cannula entry points during malar augmentation.